managers, leaders, and HR professionals, listen up because today's topic is something that nobody wants to acknowledge, nobody wants to talk about. Everybody is just closing the blind eye, looking everywhere instead of addressing the issue. And this is what I do. I talk about things that nobody wants to because I want employees' experiences to get better. I want HRs, leaders, managers, and supervisors, and everybody in every organization to have a better experience because it's not that complicated. We overcomplicated everything and now we are suffering. And plus, we don't want to acknowledge problems. So today's problem, what I want to talk about is processes with bad reputations. They are ineffective and they don't work. And we decided not to, not to acknowledge this fact. And I brought you three examples, performance improvement plan, annual appraisal, and employee engagement surveys. They are the last two, is the season for the last two. And we're going to start doing them despite knowing nobody wants to spend one more second on it. Nobody wants to do it. There is never an outcome. And we just go through the notion to keep us employed or entertained or occupied or I don't even know why we are going through these notions because it would be better not to do it. Once I did the survey, um, a statistic, some data put together in my previous company, if we just spent a euro, which is not possible, right? Because we would spend around a lot per person. And if we just spent a euro, we would waste 300,000 euros every year on this useless annual appraisal exercise. But that's not how much we, we, we spend, we, we waste, we waste millions. So I don't know how organizations can get away, or HR rather, um, get away with processes that are just wasting money and don't yield any result. And as a result of it, employees don't want to do it, organizations don't want to do it, they're just doing it, and everybody's going through a misery. Now, let's talk about that, but before, don't forget that if you want to change your organizations, the blind leading, the disengaged, the book, I will put that in the comment field so you can change your organization. And here I'm talking about, or talk, I talk a lot about talent management and learning and development. That's my background. So I'm taking employee engagement apart. I'm taking annual appraisal apart and I'm taking everything apart around, around these topics. I also started my new Substack. I'm transferring all my content so my content will not be available on LinkedIn for a long time from the 1st of January I'm gonna cut that with limited access and I'm transferring all to Substack so I will put the link join subscribe and also here on YouTube so we can create together I want these messages to go viral because there is better ways of doing human resources, people management. Forget about the word human resources, managing people. Everybody's managing people. So it's all related to us. Whether you are an employee, whether you are the CEO, it's, these topics are for everybody. But let's dive in and let's start with going back to the topic that processes with poor reputation don't work. And I allow you a second while I have a sip of tea to think about what are the processes that you could think of that have really bad reputations and nobody wants to have anything to do with them. So for me, I just listed three this morning on LinkedIn. First one is the PIP, the famous or infamous PIP, right? Performance Improvement Plan. People know that they will be fired 99% of the time. And unfortunately, I can't refute this claim or this myth, or not myth, uh, um, perspective um, about this process because during my 19 years, I have never seen a person being saved by, by this process. Anybody who went through a PIP, that was the exit strategy. And employees, unfortunately, no. And why is that? There's so many reasons around it, right? And here I, in this video, I don't want to go into it. What I would like really for managers, supervisors, leaders, HR professionals to start thinking about these processes differently. Because if your process doesn't work, 
you don't need to do it. So pip, can you imagine that I'm putting you on the pip, basically telling you that you have to, you suck at your job and you will be out in three months because that's the end goal. We know that, right? I know you would say, but no, we do the plan. It's not reality. So don't try to justify it to the employees. They're not going to believe you and they won't have anything to do with it. The person immediately shuts down. There is no space for learning, for development, for self-reflection with the greatest intention. Yes, there are people who've been saved probably. I have never seen it. I understand the process and once again, it should work because the intention of the process is to get you better or get you out. And for some reason, it always, get, it always gets people out. So that performance improvement plan has really bad reputation and therefore people don't want to have anything to do with it and therefore it doesn't work. So what is it that we can do? So just ask yourself the question, depending on the legislations within the country, do we need to follow this process by le legally speaking, right? If it comes to tribunal or, or, or some sort of um, case, disciplinary or grievance, sorry, would it need, do, do we need that as a backup? Now, if it's needed, I have worked with one organizations and we figured it out because there's always a way around. You just need to consult your legal team. Um, and they put in place a very quick, do you want to go through the PIP process? And the person could opt in or opt out. And that's it. So the company offers it. If you choose not to go through it, thank you. And then they save time, three months, six months, whatever the program is, right? That person, because now it's from there onwards, it's just torture for everyone. So we don't need to, you know, do that. And then they say to the person, look, we're going to give you three months salary, go and figure yourself out. And that's it, right? Then you have, yeah, that's all I want to talk about PIPs. It's a horrible process. Think about it. You either get rid of it, you reshape it, you reform it, you, you rename it, you, you not just rename it, but really, how can I do it? Think about it. How can I do it differently? I am creative, but I don't really know how that can be done differently, apart from prevention. So my strategy was always preventing. I don't want to get there because that's a horrible place to be for everybody. So I don't want to get there. So what can I do to make sure that I don't get there? So the first one is onboarding. Onboarding is your prevention. That's your preventative tool to get there. And that's perfect. So I always try to prevent things rather than dealing with these nasty processes because that's a horrible process. Once again, it's not the tool, it's not the processes, it's the emotion and everything that comes with it. Nobody wants. I have sat in front of a senior global VP, a man, a 50 years old man crying in front of me across the table because we put him on PIP and he knew and he asked me, I'm done, right? And I couldn't even say no. <laughs> because I just said, well, let's see. I will not lie <laughs> to anybody. <laughs> so, but I could not say, no, 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 we are here to save you. No. <laughs> so stop that process. Somehow figure it out what works for your organization. In some companies, they don't have it. They just say, you meet your performance target. So that's also preventative measure, right? You meet your performance targets, you stay. If you miss your performance targets for three consecutive quarter, let's say, you automatically out. There is no plan. Because that's now you're going into performance management and um, you can be fired based on delivery. <laughs> so even that is not that simple. So once again, go to your la labor law legislation, what that requires and work it out for yourself. The second one, annual appraisal. Now, if you want to kill me, then just put, give me another appraisal in my life because I really would like to go through it. People know there is so many problems with annual appraisals. And if we have time with this video, I'm going to write, read out something that I wrote, how HR made annual appraisal redundant. HR is sometimes, you know, guys, you need to think. So annual appraisal. Um, 
any other person is really, everybody knows that the, the data is biased. It's an opinion piece at best. Um, it's all about your opinion about me and it's statistically proven. So we have scientific data to prove it that 61%, if I'm not mistaken, of what's in my annual appraisal is your opinion rather than what I'm actually doing. So it's terrible. We need to rethink that. We need to get rid of it. But don't go and get rid of it because then you are impacting other areas of performance management. How do we promote? How do we manage uh, pay bonuses? So start from the back. Okay, I need to, what is the use of this piece of nothing? Literally, this piece of sheet that we are having in front of us at the end of the annual appraisal that, oh, these are the superstars, these are the, th that sheet doesn't say anything. So what's the purpose of it? Based on that, I'm going to promote. How else can I promote if I get rid of it? Based on that, I'm going to pay bonuses, etc., etc. Whatever you do as the outcome within your organization, go and reverse engineer backwards. Okay, how can I do it differently? So then by the end of it, you get rid of that process because if you don't provide something else, you impact other areas. So get rid of it. People hate it. They don't trust it. It's just a waste of time, energy, and money, organization and money. And we don't even promote, we don't even pay bonuses, we don't even fire, we don't even do um, anything based on that piece of paper, if you want to be honest. So it's just all a story. So once again, talent department is busy. Get rid of it instead of torturing hundreds and thousands of employees because of, uh, with this process. And then you have the engagement survey, the carry on, the saga every year. Now, people never saw any real change as an outcome or faced, you know, sometimes backlash because of their input. Now, let me tell you something here or let me say something here. I hear a lot of uh, and just to show you how much people don't trust these processes, these processes have horrible reputations. So they're not going to give you valid or useful data because people just reply whatever they want to reply. And here I also would like to say that I see a lot of videos on TikTok where people are saying that they provided feedback, an anonymous survey, and all of a sudden they were, they, they, the, the management knew that it was them. Now, never in my life, and I have run a few engagement surveys, seen that the survey is not anonymous. We never knew where, who, who is saying what. And even with smaller departments where you could figure out who said that because of the, the, the categorization, right? Senior role and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like three people in the department. It's very easy to figure out who says what. So even those departments, we club them together so the numbers are bigger and we don't know where it's coming from because that's not the purpose. So that's my experience. But people are having experiences that, you know, they give feedback and then they receive backlash and then, then they are being victimized and then the, the manager is picking on them or, or whatever. I had a HR director who used to say the survey came out, comes out and it you know, it's coming from HR, so within her department, and she would be like the next day, who said what? Why did you say that? Who said that? Who said that? That is not a purpose or uh, the purpose of the process. And you can say that, yeah, we don't do that. However, employees are having bad experiences with these processes, and you are never going to turn this around. It's like pushing me to go out with a guy with a bad reputation. It ain't happening, lovely. Okay, so stop it. And figure out what is it that you can do. It's as for the employee engagement survey, you need to survey or measure employees' experiences at every single step of the employee journey. You need to measure the well-being. And well-being is not that how many times you went for yoga, but their interaction with the leadership, their, their compensation and reward and benefit, their safety, their security, and so many different areas to well-being, right? The financial situation, their, their mental and physical health. And then you add these data together 
And then you do that continuously, because if you are measuring the employee's experiences, for example, or along the, the seven areas, right, in which I write about in, in, in this book, then you measure that, okay, during the onboarding process, the guys are not happy. Why not? You go back. Then during the, you know, in terms of motivation, they are not very motivated. Why not? Is it the managers? Is it the culture? Is it their pay grade? Is it whatever that is? In terms of the development, professional development, they are not very happy or they are super happy. So you need to measure each of these areas separately for you to know where to go and fix. Because the annual engagement saga, first of all, not that it doesn't give you any valid data, and I'll come back to it in a minute, um, but it also is just a summary of everything. So you as a HR professional, as a business leader, you don't even know where your systems are broken. Maybe this part of its, you know, employees' experiences, the systems that they are interacting with is fantastic. And you are not, this, the data, the survey that you are conducting is not highlighting what is broken. Because let's be honest, these surveys are so generic, bullshit. And even when they are spe specific, people never get any result. They don't see any result. I told you that the gym is broken for the next five, last five years and it's still broken. So why should I tell you one more time? And coming to this, I wanted to say something about the collection rate. Now, first of all, nobody is as delusional to believe that you achieve 90 plus percent employee engagement rate, okay? I don't know what companies you are doing with your data. This is bullshit when we know that the annual, um, the global engagement surveys are around 15 to 16%. So, I don't know what you are measuring, okay? That's all wrong. Second of all, this mandatory, um, it always made me laugh, this mandatory um, completion rate, right? The HR is literally, and your managers are knocking your head. Hey, complete the survey. They make you sit in rooms, and you can't leave the room until you completed the survey. If your engagement survey completion rate is 20%, that's your real data. That is your real data. Because that's the indication of how much the employees want to participate. Now, it could be a positive or negative. And that's why I don't like just surveys, quantitative. You need qualitative surveys, uh, um, um, data as well. Because if I receive 30%, 20%, I would leave it as it is. This is your data. And then I would send in my HR team and ask, why did you not participate? Because, and you might find answers, look, everything is fine. I'm talking to my managers every single week, you know, the communication is constant. So I didn't feel that I have to, you know, participate. Fantastic. That's a positive feedback. The person is happy, right? Then you have the, 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 uh, another side, the person would say, look, I've been completing this survey for years and years and years, not only in here, in my previous company as well, because we have this pathology, right? We carry with us. Nothing ever happened, so I can't be bothered. Now that's the negative one, but we need that information because the survey itself, if you force people to complete, they're just gonna click something I used to do that. I'm like, okay, I just click based on the mood I was in on that day. Like I could, if my, I didn't get my promotion, I had a fight with my manager the previous week, everything won. Now, is this what we want? We don't want that. That's an incorrect data because then you are going to build a whole strategy if we are lucky enough and you make the effort of building a strategy around how to remedy that. But what you are remedying, just Sylvia being in a bad mood today. So what you need to do with this annual engagement saga is get rid of it. And companies are doing constantly surveying people. Now you can do that daily, weekly. You can do that with your employee experience survey. You constantly getting the data. So all you do at the end of the year is pull that data. Here is everybody's engagement throughout the year. Sylvia's was like that because she's like that, right? 
this person is stable. This person, oh, okay, what happened there? And the whole organization is going to be like that because that's the nature of business, that's the nature of life. And there's nothing wrong with it. But pulling, one, having one snapshot of a year and building strategies on that, for me, it always boggled my mind. Like I'm like, how? Who allowed this? The based on the one week or two weeks, sometimes a month, depending on the company, right size of period, data collection, we decide what we are going to do with the entire workforce that is constantly changing the next year. How? So, it's not only that your processes with bad reputations don't work, even if they have a good reputation, it just doesn't work. They just don't work because businesses are changing. So adjust, look at your people, Tools are great, but tools are managed by people. And we decide whether the outcome of that tool is good or not. And guess what? Most of us are untrained. Most of us don't care. Most of us just, okay, whatever. It's just an extra job on top of my 20 million things to do. So I'm just going to complete it for you because you want it. But that's not quality. And we are, and we are building strategies organization-wide strategies based on these low quality output as a result of these processes that are not trusted, often hated, and nobody wants to see them ever again. But don't just get rid of them because people are people. If you take something away, even if they hate it, they're gonna complain. So come up with something else and, and, and that's that. So I didn't get to read this article, but I will put it in the, in the link below in the field. It's how HR made annual appraisal redundant. It's a, it's a good laugh. So have a little read. Don't forget to subscribe and let's spread the news because we need to have better experiences. We need to run organizations more efficiently and, and create better work environments because I'm fed up of the fight between employers and employees. We can do better.